Hello everyone, welcome to the channel 10 clicks where we practically discuss IT topics to the point. Today I am going to show you caching in ASP.NET Core. Caching is a way to store frequently used data in a temporary storage for fast access instead of reaching out to database every time. It improves performance and scalability of the application. In this video we are going to see implementation of in-memory cache. Without further ado, Let's create a new project, preferably ASP.NET Core web application and let's call it simple cache. So in this demo, we will use Microsoft extensions caching memory package. So let's go ahead and add that through NuGet. Now let's add it in the middleware so for that we need to open up startup.cs and to begin with let me add MVC and the add memory cache And in the endpoint, I'm going to map controllers. Okay. And let's go ahead and create a controller. Okay, so add controller and let's go for the empty MVC controller. Let the name be homecontroller.cs So first and foremost we need to add dependency inject the memory cache. So let's go ahead and do that. and it is available in this uh, Microsoft extensions namespace and we can inject it through constructor okay and in the index method we will do a couple of things one we will have to choose the data to cache and second, we have to write a condition to check whether can we get the data from the cache or pull it up from the database. And for the purpose of this video, let us call that variable or the data as name. And let's check whether the name exists in cache or not. In this try get value method name is the key and this out variable is the value and let's write the condition if it does not exist then we have to pull it up from the database
we have not written this uh, db call yet we will write it in a bit and once we pull up that value from the db we will update the cache and we will send this data to the view as well and I'm going to use uh, view data in this case and let's do the else part if the value is available in the cache then we will return that value itself say so this value is from cache and the value is name because we have already have the getter method and we will use the same let's uh, finish up this get name method assuming that uh, this is going to pick up from the database right now we will just return uh, a string name okay let me call it Bharat it is a good policy to set cache expiration policy because the value will not be there forever user will also update the value so it is a good practice to save it in the cache only for a set of time so in this case we will let's say we will cache it for five seconds and we have to send this options that we created just now and while setting it we have to set it with options so I need to cut this out and put it above uh, the set statement okay now let's focus on the view let's create the view index and also set the routing now let's create the view let it be a reserve view and all we have to do in the view is to access the view data and print it out let me create a variable name and access the view data and 
print it within a span tag. Let's execute it to see it in action. Let me try accessing home index. So as you can see, the first time when we try accessing the value, it is saying this value is from DB and the value is Bharat. And next time when I try to refresh the page, it is saying this value is from cache. Okay, let me refresh it again. Now it is again from DB because we set the uh, cache expiration to five seconds. When I now refresh it, it's again from uh, cache. But when I keep on refreshing, it will be from cache only. So this is the beauty of caching the values because when the user is trying to access it, access it multiple times, it will not go to the database. It will rather return it from cache. Now, let's say the user has stopped refreshing the page or accessing the page and uh, he has gone to get a coffee or he is chatting with his colleagues and stuff like that. And after a while, he is trying to access the value, then it will return from DB. So in our policy, we have set it as 5 seconds, but in real world, you may want to have a higher, higher time as uh, the cache uh, sliding time. Later, we will also discuss about caching using Redis data structure and distributed cache. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.